what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel and now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking i can see it then being you know a bad match but for everyone else hi welcome y'all let me tell y'all so if you're unfamiliar with bradderstein a fellow britney who does true crime on YouTube, we both have an affinity for horror films. And apparently there are a lot of good ones that mother has missed, okay? So anytime Britney sees a good one, actually she sent me a list to start with of all her favorites. On the list is The Green Inferno. Now I watched The Green Inferno and I don't recommend that you watch it if you have a weak stomach. Yeah, so I watched that and then I had this case to research and I was not really familiar with what happened beyond it being a disappearance and an unsolved case, right? So as I'm, I'm researching and my mind is fresh off the green inferno, it, it, was, it was a lot. If you've seen the movie, you're gonna know what I'm talking about, but without spoiling it for anyone else, it's about this group of students who go to the Amazonian jungle to try to like be missionaries and help this tribe there but the tribe there don't want to be helped okay they are cannibals and things go left real fast yeah watching that movie before researching this was a wild ride for sure um but yeah watching that movie before researching this case was quite the experience without further ado i'm gonna get right into the details of today's case which is the disappearance of lisa ann Frohn and Chris Kramers. So the year that we are in is 2014. 21 year old Chris and a 22 year old Lisa Ann have both grown up in the Netherlands. Both of them attend college where Lisa Ann has just graduated with her degree in applied sciences and Chris is currently studying for a degree in cultural social education and the girls decide that in order to celebrate Lisanne's graduation they'll take a nice trip to Panama and this is not something that they just decide on a whim that they're gonna do they put a lot of thought into this they spend a lot of time planning six months planning ahead and saving money for their travel now they arrive in Panama on March 15th of 2014 and they spend the first two weeks exploring the area enjoying the culture of the locals the food the drinks all of the things right and they also spend time trying to you know learn as much Spanish as they can get in for the second leg of their trip now the trip in total is six weeks the first two weeks are leisure are fun and the four weeks after that they plan to spend volunteering with local children teaching them arts crafts and learning more Spanish now on March 29th after they've spent the two weeks having fun they travel to Boquette which is a small mountain town on the west side of the country about 37 miles away from the border of Costa Rica and there they have found a host family that will you know house them kind of look after them sponsor them while they're there but when they arrive at the host family's house they find out that their job teaching at the school has been postponed and it will now start a week later than they had originally anticipated so at this point the two of them decide to use this extra week that they have exploring the area that they'll be residing in and experiencing more of the things now on april 1st just a couple days later the weather is really nice and it's perfect for a nice mid-morning hike that morning they pack a backpack of essentials they set off to have breakfast and then they set off to explore la pianista trail and this is a very popular trail that people explore all the time now some versions of the story say they took the host family's dog or a dog named blue that belonged to restaurant owners from the village and that later the dog returns to the village but the girls don't return with the dog where is the dog in the pictures girl if if said dog existed where is said dog because you know as humans we love to get down crouch down and take a picture with a dog but this dog that they claim was taken with them is not seen in any of the photographs unless of course the dog is taking the pictures himself which i doubt after breakfast the two of them take a taxi to the start of the trail and they begin their hike they reach the summit around 1 p.m and instead of turning around at the lookout point and taking the trail back down to 
the starting point as tourists typically do the two girls decide to travel beyond that point now beyond the lookout point the trail is very rugged very steep and very dangerous even for the most experienced hiker and between the months of april and october they experience a lot of heavy rains in the area and the area becomes so treacherous that even the local indigenous in yobi tribe that lives in the area only will travel certain areas if it's absolutely necessary. Now, because of how dangerous it is, there are signs that warn people not to travel beyond this point without a guide. But for whatever reason, Chris and Lisanne feel comfortable enough to proceed anyway. Not only had they researched the area prior to traveling there, just three days before they had gone out to the trail, they had researched the area beyond the summit on Google. And we can only assume that it was the waterfall deeper in the jungle that the two girls wanted to see. And given the time of day that they reached the top, they would have had hours of sunlight left to explore. Now later that evening, the two ladies do not return home. And the host family, they find this to be a bit odd. They look around, you know, outside in the village, around the town for the girls, they don't find them. And they are even more alarmed when night falls and the girls still have not returned to the home. Now they have booked a local guide for the following morning to take them around a national park nearby, but neither of the girls show up for that and at this point the host family knows that something is terribly wrong they report the girls missing and a day after that now that they have been missing for 48 hours the authorities go out with the help of locals the dogs that that sniff and find scents and helicopters to scour the area to see if they can find them but unfortunately they don't find anything and five days into the girls disappearance chris and lisanne's parents decide to fly over and help look for their children Dutch detectives even fly in as well to help assist with the search. They also bring in specialized rescue professionals to help and for 10 days strong they go out looking for these women and still nothing. The parents offer a $30,000 reward for any viable information regarding their girls' disappearance and still nobody comes forward with any information. By this time, the parents are super worried because if the girls set off to do a hike that would only take them a couple of hours, five to six hours max, it's very unlikely that they had packed enough essentials to survive just a couple of days, let alone two weeks. Lisa Ann also has asthma and complained to the host family about experiencing shortness of breath so her asthma paired with the altitude change of the area they're hiking paired with panic if they had gotten lost is definitely not a good combination eventually the search efforts they die down and authorities have to pull back they have not found anything it has been weeks and nothing is turning up but 10 weeks into their disappearance in june of 2014 a local woman stumbles upon a backpack that she turns in and this backpack belongs to chris and lisanne the distance is estimated to be about an eight hour walk from their last known location it's very near the village of alta romero the area where it was found would have been extremely difficult to reach by foot so they assume they had fallen into the river and just been washed down that far However, the contents inside the bag have no water damage. The bag itself is in great condition. It does not look like it has spent weeks in the jungle, especially with how hard and how frequently it had rained in the weeks prior. Furthermore, the woman who found the bag is absolutely sure that it was not in that spot the day before. The backpack contains Lee Sand's camera, her passport, a water bottle, both women's cell phones, both of their sunglasses, $83 in cash and both of the women's bras. If that's not strange enough, between the belongings found inside of the bag, there are 34 different fingerprints on the contents inside of the bag, and there are 13 different fingerprints on the bag itself, like the outside of the bag. Now, unfortunately, the DNA found on the items on the bag don't match anybody that's currently in the database, so it doesn't lead to any leads for detectives it just adds to the confusion and child confusion is the theme here okay because that's just the tip of the iceberg they go through the camera unfortunately though 
the camera does not have a GPS location option, so they're unable to tell exactly where the photos are taken, aside from what they see in the photo. The pictures on the camera, they start off the morning that they set off on this hike, and they're very typical tourist photos. Different pictures of the area, nice pictures of the landscape, of the girls together, taking selfie style, some of them taken of each other and most of them are of Chris walking ahead leading the way and then there are photos of the girls following an indigenous trail near a creek that heads downhill opposite the direction of the trail that they had just completed in the exit this is Chris crossing a small stream the picture was taken at 1 54 p.m obviously before they had run into any type of trouble and while looking at the photos they noticed that there are 133 consecutive photos taken but one image is missing image 509 now this one photo had obviously been deleted by someone according to the dutch specialists who worked to retrieve the photo it is impossible for the camera to have skipped a number by accident while shooting photos they attempt to undelete the photo, which for them, the specialist, is typically an easy task unless somebody has gone and intentionally made sure that a photo is unretrievable, which would have required somebody to hook the camera up to a computer to permanently delete it. And that is what the Dutch authorities believed happened, that somebody went in and intentionally deleted photo 509 to hide whatever was in it another something that they find extremely odd is that of the 133 photos taken there is a gap 43 were taken on april 1st the day that they had set out their tourist picture is real cute then there is a gap in dates because the photos don't pick up again until april 8th between the hours of 1 a.m and 4 a.m most of them are in complete darkness or you can see like the rain falling time between the photos ranges from seconds to 15 minutes in between very few of them appear to have been taken intentionally and most of them look to be accidents they're blurred by motion or you can't see anything at all because it's in complete darkness and the most puzzling photo is this close-up of Chris's head now a lot of people say that there was blood on her temple you can see a wound I don't see when I say I didn't zoomed in on this picture I didn't turned up the brightness I didn't done all of the things I don't see no blood these contacts have definitely been in longer than they should so I'm not sure I, I, I personally don't see the blood but I do agree that this photo is very bizarre and what's bizarre -er is what they find in the lady's phone records they're able to retrieve the activity of both women's cell phones they show that the first day they were out there at 4 39 p.m chris attempts to dial 911, but she had no reception 12 minutes later lisa ann makes an attempt to dial 911 from her phone but she also has no service after that both girls phones are powered off and they don't come back on for 14 hours when they make several more attempts to call for help the next day. Lisa Ann begins making 911 calls from her phone at 6.58 a.m. Chris attempts a call at 8.14 and that is the only attempt made from her phone for that day. They just used Lisa Ann's phone to make several more attempts. She attempts to call twice more at 10.52 a.m. again at 1.50 p.m. and in between these failed attempts at dialing 911 they are powering the phones off presumably to preserve the battery life over a span of four days 77 attempts are made to dial 911 but due to poor reception 76 of the 77 do not connect at all Lisanne's phone actually connects for just two seconds before the call fails and that is as close as they get to reaching somebody on day four lisa ann's phone is powered back on at 4 50 a.m but 10 minutes later the phone is turned off again and it never powers back on there is no more activity from her phone after this point which detectives assume that at this point her battery had died but here's where things get a bit more bizarre because on that same day someone attempts to unlock chris's phone but chris's password is entered incorrectly and for the next several days more failed 
failed attempts are made to access her phone. And these attempts are made at the same times each day. In the 10 a.m. hour, again in the 1 p.m. hour, then the phone is turned off and is off for five days before someone attempts to power on the phone again and use it. On April 11th, the phone is powered on. Someone makes an unsuccessful attempt at entering the pen again at 10.51 a.m. They successfully enter it at 11.56 a.m., but no attempts to call for help. Then at 1.05 p.m., the phone is powered off at 22% battery life, and there is no activity on the phone after this. Not long after the discovery of the backpack, Chris's jean shorts are found caught on a narrow strip of land between two very fast-flowing rivers. Now, a popular untruth about this story is that the, the shorts were found neatly folded up, buttoned up, and like placed on a rock above the river. This photo is how the shorts were found, and they were pretty torn up. They had a lot of distress to them that could have likely happened at the hands of the river in like the branches and rocks that they had gotten stuck on. The distance between where the backpack was found and where the shorts had been found would have been another 14 hours of walking. Each time that something is found, they send out a search team to like scour the area and then nothing more comes up. Now two months after the shorts are found a little further down in the direction that the river flows one half of Chris's pelvic bone is found behind a tree. One of each of the girls' boots are also found and Lisanne's foot is still inside of her boot. The laces of the boot are still very tightly tied and when they analyze the foot and the boot they see that the bone is cut very clean. Now as for the rest of the foot it is like in the natural stage of decomp is where they expected it to be for the amount of time that it is spent out in the elements but Chris's bone is very eerily clean and after this more bones just continue to surface a little further down in the same direction that the river is flowing an additional 33 bones are found scattered in the wooded area most of the bones are broken up bone pieces belonging to a left leg. Chris's number 10 right rib bone is found along with Lisanne's femur upper leg bone and her tibia and these bones are also very strangely super clean. It is impossible for them to determine definitively how the bones were broken and whether or not it had happened pre or post mortem. Several weeks after this on August 29th Roughly five months after the girls have gone missing, a rolled up ball of skin from Lee Sand's shin is found. And a forensic pathologist determines that it was still in the early stages of decomposition, which makes no sense. At this point, the Panamanian authorities, they offer their explanation or their official theory behind what had happened to them, which was both women have fallen off of a monkey bridge and were subsequently washed away by the raging waters of the river. Now, the Dutch authorities agree that the deaths were likely an accident. However, there are investigators and officers on both sides, the Panamanian team and the Dutch team, that don't believe that this was an accident. They believe that they had definitely been met with some sort of foul play. Now, Panama's attorney general initially declares it a homicide, but when their forensics team failed to make sense of it and give an official conclusion. The case is changed to an accident and then closed. They were willing to entertain the theory that this was foul play, but in the end, they decided that more evidence pointed to this being an accident. It appeared to be a simple case of the girls becoming lost during their exploration and then unfortunately succumbing to the jungle. And that particular part of the jungle where their things have been found is preferred to by the locals is jungle hell, a challenge for even the local tour guides. Now the Dutch, they were like, okay girl, like we were with you with this being an accident, but them climbing up on a monkey bridge and falling off, like that does not sound likely. And we are not about to just agree to any old thing, okay? Panama's perceived lack of interest in finding out what really happened to them makes the Dutch authorities question if it was them that deleted image 509. Like what if one of your locals was found in the photo and you wanted to hide that fact? It's also said that 
The Panamanian authorities were being a little bit vague and sketchy with the information that the Dutch authorities had issues getting like official paperwork, documents. The forensic pathologists on the Panamanian team, they're like notes. There are a lot of theories about the Panamanian authorities like covering something up, but unfortunately we don't have any more information. No more discoveries of remains are found after the bones and skin. A book called Lost in the Jungle was written by two Dutch authors who believe that they have solved the mystery. And it's not as sinister as a lot of people believe. Um, according to them, they think that the girls got lost in the jungle, of course, fell victim to the flash flooding that had happened in the area in the days following them disappearing. They believe that Chris had been injured first and it actually died the night that the photos were taken and that the photos were taken because Lisanne was attempting, because mind you, they were taken between 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. And a lot of them are up toward the sky. You can see the rain falling down on the lens or tore the lens. And they believe this is because she was trying to use the flash on the camera to signal for help, hoping that in the dead of night and darkness, somebody would see the camera flashing. But after that had failed and Chris had passed away, she had set off on her own to try to find her way out of the jungle. And that she was the one putting in the incorrect pen in Chris's phone, trying to guess what it was because her own phone, of course, had died. Of course, a lot of people believe that the trouble the girls ran into was not nature at all. The girls had been killed and that the photos had been taken afterward by whoever had done it. This case has sparked an online debate that keeps on going. Some people believe that the attackers scattered their bones, later planted the evidence like the skin, the backpack, the shorts, while others believe that wildlife is simply to blame for the scattered remains. That if one of the girls had fallen from somewhere up high, the leg could have been broken in different areas and wildlife could have come through and cleaned the remains down to the bone. Then of course, there are the many fingerprints. This is what gets me because I'm willing to believe this was an accident that happened kind of like that. Who are all these people going through the backpack and touching the backpack? That's what I want to know. That's, to me, what makes it seem a little eerie. I know they talk to the locals, they question the locals a lot, but did they fingerprint the locals? Because who was touching on this backpack? Somebody was. What's also really strange about this case is that on April 4th, three days after the girls had gone out there, the 22-year-old taxi driver who had taken them out there is found deceased in a river not far away. According to his family, he had gone out there with a group and they were just hanging out at the river. At around 6 p.m., they had packed up to go home, but he had gone back down to the river to relieve himself and never returned. That same day, they had reported him missing, and the following day, he was found around 1 p.m. Is, is, is that a... Is that a coincidence? That's very strange to me. But I don't know what that means. And I'm pretty sure y'all gonna have some really interesting theories about that. Also, why were the girls' bras folded up and placed inside of their backpack? What was that about? Because as a woman with breasts myself, I can see why one would be out there and take their bra off, honestly. I think it's possible that they could have got a little hot in their bras and taken them off. I would. Child, I'd take this hair off. They would have found, in my backpack, they would have definitely found this little hair. I'm good for a wig snatch off. It's just so many unanswered questions. And unfortunately, I don't think we ever gonna get the answers. The cause of the girl's death and their disappearance have never been determined and remain a very strange mystery. And I wanna know what your thoughts are. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think happened to them? Like I said, coming off the heels of the Green Inferno and knowing there was a little local tribe there, why well, my brain went. The hamster and her wheel got to running over time. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Share the video with a friend. If you do not have a weak stomach, watch The Green Inferno. Let me know what you think about that. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Like, what are you doing? As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Hi, Papa. Hi, son. What are you doing? Come here. If you ain't gotta come here, I don't care. Every time you wanna tell them to come here, they wanna look at you like, no. Girl, that's if my heart gonna break. Now I'm getting excited thinking he was about to come here.
21 year old Chris and a 22 year old Lisanne have both grown up in the Neverland, Neverlands, the Neverlands girl, where Michael Jackson run the show, or Peter Pan, quite as gifted the same person, to Panama. And this is not something that they blew. Papa, please. For the second leg of their trip, the trip. La Pianista Trail. La Pianista. La Pianista. I can't say it. They take a tag. Come on. A national park. I can't talk, girl. Okay. Now their parents offer a 33, not 33. Where I'm getting at a three from? Now the, the parents also, the parents offer a 30. I was about to say 33 again, girl. Someone attempts to use, someone attempts. Okay. But there are no attempts at that point made to dial for a car. The laces of the boot are still lightly tied. Lightly tied, girl. That's not right, because they was tightly. I need to substitute the L for a T. I'm getting my life together, because I got to finish filming this. And several weeks later, on August, then several, se <clears throat> no. Then several weeks later on August 9th, no, this, it was August 29th, girl, let's not do this, we almost done. Attorney General officially declares, declares, what a D, what a, what a, what a D. I'm hungry. It's one o'clock, ain't fed me, my goodness. 